money, wealth, assets, opportunities even, that you may lose. You must ask yourself if you love the people, because uh, the only thing that can bind you uh, to the people you serve is love. The ambition is not enough. Mm -hmm. uh, I have discovered the power of kindness. And that has made me a radical optimist. That's why I stay away from politics and from religion. Countries that take unilateral action or coercive action actually like uh, Pinoy personally. It's not a beauty contest who's, uh, who's ahead of who. Yeah. Uh, but to Once upon a time, we were all irrelevant. And I sincerely believe that there will come a time we will all return to the dark embrace of irrelevance. Martin's man. This economic elite control uh, the instrumentalities of the government, the government, the government. Make you a man or destroy you. Philippine society is like a pyramid, a pyramid, a pyramid. We are back. This is Martin's Man Cave, the 80th episode with former AFP General Victor Corpus. Earlier on, before we took a break, we were about to uh, discuss his ideologies, how he turned from from a devout uh, Catholic uh, student and how he moved to the Philippine Military Academy and from the PMA how he was able to imbibe that ideology and culture of the people back then who struggled against the government. Sir, tell us how it developed. Uh, okay, I was able to enter La Salle by accident, literally. Because uh, in I was enrolled by my parents in a uh, in the post school mm -hmm. in fo what was then called Fort William McKinley mm -hmm. uh, that became uh, Fort Bonifacio because my father was a military officer a military doctor uh, while playing in the playground uh, there was that slide that you climb and then slide down. Mm -hmm. But instead of sliding down, the one following me was maybe in a hurry. Mm -hmm. He pushed me. And instead of sliding down, I, I fell to the ground from, from the top of the slide to the ground and uh, lost consciousness. Mm -hmm. And I only woke up when I was already in the hospital. And uh, because of that uh, incident, my... My mother pulled me out of the school. They decided to enroll me in La Salle. But they had to sacrifice a lot to, to be able to send me there. Uh, so I really thank my parents for that because uh, uh, I learned a lot from La Salle. The, the moral upbringing, my moral upbringing was all because of uh, my education in Lazar. When I was already leaving for the PMA at that time, one of my teachers then, Brother Richard, Brother Bonaventure Richard, he wished me luck, but he said that the Philippine Military Academy can either make you a man or destroy you. On my fourth year, I. I really exerted the all effort to study and I was able to catch up mm -hmm. and eventually graduated uh, number three in the whole class. I was given the bronze med medal for general excellence. Mm -hmm. Hindi lang binigay sa akin yung valedictorian dahil uh, umabul ka na lang. Huli, huli na. <laughs> huli na lahat. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, after high school, immediately I went to PMA. Mm -hmm. This was already my third year. 
Our history teacher was uh, a very nationalistic uh, and very passionate uh, teacher. He had a doctorate in, in a Canadian university. Mm. This teacher was constantly attacking uh, church practices. Yung katulad ng mga ano, ni pa, mga adventures ni Father Damaso. <laughs> Padre Damaso. Okay. okay. Yung kay Rizal. Uh, and then, uh, he, he was also very anti-American. Yung quote and quote. And because of my upbringing nga, na American mga American na uh, teachers yung mga American brothers yung uh, nagturo sa amin and uh, yung religious background nga every time na uh, uh, this teacher of mine attacks the church or attacks the American I was one of those who were first to argue with with my teacher to question yung kanyang uh, tinuturo. But every time I uh, try to refute yung kanyang mga presentations, lagi akong napapahiya sa harap ng klase. Dahil uh, my arguments were all based on emotion eh. Mm-hmm. Asia, historical facts. Mm-hmm. Logic. No? Uh, because I, I was not aware of that portion of our history. Kasi iba yung turo sa aming, iba yung history ni Saide dun sa history ni Agoncillo eh, di ba? <laughs> what I did was uh, to back up my, my arguments. I became a regular visitor sa library. Every free time, I, I run to the library and do research. But every time I, but the more I read, and the more I, the more I knew, the more I realized that what my teacher was saying were the truth, historical facts. You can you cannot argue with historical facts. On my fourth year, there was another, I know, doctorate uh, professor. Major Dante Simbulan at that time. You listen to every word that comes out of his mouth. Magaling yung presentation and very calm but very penetrating. Mm-hmm. Ang thesis niya that Philippine society is like a pyramid. That on top, you have... Uh, Point one of one percent, or one hundred uh, families, controlling practically the entire wealth of the country. Controlling land, most of the land, which is the basic means of production. This uh, elite few not only controls economic power, but they also control political power. Because economic power begets political power. And they use this little political power that they monopolize to protect and preserve their narrow class interest. This economic elite control uh, the instrumentalities of uh, government. One of the instrumentalities of government is the armed forces, the police, the courts. So, ang lumalabas dyan, the uh, elite are just using us not really in the service of the people, but in the service of this elite few. Ganun magiging feeling mo. Based on that uh, uh, theory. Theory. Doon nag-umbisa yung aking kamulatan. We are not really serving the interest of our people, but we are serving the interest of uh, 
a chosen few in our society or the vested interest of a narrow class. Mm -hmm. I'll give you some examples mm -hmm. that convince me that we are just a tool of the elite. When I was assigned in the Special Forces, Philippine Constabulary, I came from the Army. After our Special Forces training and airborne training, I suddenly received uh, uh, an order saying that I'm being transferred to the PC. I, I didn't want to enter the Philippine Constabulary. Why, why, why are you ordering me to go there <laughs> against my will? So I requested General Headquarters to transfer me to the Philippine Navy instead if they want to transfer me. But uh, my request was denied. So I was assigned to the Special Forces of the, the Philippine Constabulary. At that time, the head was Orlando Dulay. I later found out that the, the people that we are going to train are people from uh, the private army of uh, do na reinforce yung yung perception ko na ginagamit lang kami ng mga nagaharing uri para for their own selfish interest. Mm -hmm. Why why are they going to use us to train goons? Actually, they were they were goons, mga private armies. And they, the the funny thing is that their their firearms are more modern than uh, the firearms in the armed forces. <laughs> More sophisticated, huh? Uh, we, we were only using Garand at that, at that time, Carbine and Garand. Mm -hmm. They were already using M14 and M16 and M79. Then, what kind of orders do, missions do we get? <laughs> Patayin mo si Gento, patayin mo si Ganyan. Ganun, huh? Isang mission na binigay sa amin, kasi isang piyesta, sa Pamplona, Cagayan, yung mayor doon, nagpapaputok ng baril. Mm -hmm. Yung sa, sa In, ere. Indiscriminate no? firing. Indiscriminate firing. Mm -hmm. Sin sinitas yan yung dalawang tao namin. Yung bodyguard niya, pinaligiran yung tao namin. And then, nawala na lang yung tao namin. <laughs> yung pala, linibing na nila. <laughs> okay. So, itong si o namin, <laughs> nung nalaman yung ganun, they sent, they sent uh, mga special forces teams to hunt down the mayor. Oh. And then, isa ako doon sa pinadala na, na, na patayin yung mayor. Oh. But, uh, al alam ko naman yung illegal order sa ano, siyempre, I did not uh, participate. participate. Instead, <laughs> ang natagpuan ko doon yung unang naging girlfriend ko. <laughs> Isang doktora sa Pamplona, Cagayan. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Si Wilhelmina or Wilma Aquino. Mm -hmm. Ibang putukan yun. <laughs> <laughs> We were already engaged to get married. Eh, sabi niya, dalawang taon lang. I will specialize on my yung kanyang kwan sa pagka medicine, medicine. Mm -hmm. and then come back after two years eh at that time eh nag, meron ng first quarter storm na baling naman yung attention ko kay Melly dun sa <laughs> yung mga aktivista so iniisip ko kung since I was already decided on what to do uh -huh. kasi sabi ko I will devote my life to the effort in changing our status quo. The struggle. Or, or, or changing our, <laughs> what I see as a rotten system. Doon, doon nga sa unit namin nag-umpisa yung mga salvaging eh. Oh. Doon na uso. Special forces, yeah. Doon na uso. Yeah. And that was 1968? 69. 69. 69. Oh, 68, 69. Mm -hmm. Ganon, nag-umpisa. Mm -hmm. Yan, yung Jabida affair. Kasi yung mga members yeah. ng Jabida, mga roommates ko, <laughs> they were inviting me to to join the Jabida. Sila, no? 
Sina ano yan? Yung head to si Martin. Abadilia. Abadilia. Hmm. Sina... Kabats mo si Abadilia. Oh, two years ahead sa akin. Oh, pero roommates mo sa... Roommates ko sa Special Forces. Uh-huh. Uh, so, when they... When they uh, come back from their mission, hmm. nagkikwentuhan kami. So, alam ko lahat yung nangyayari dun sa, dun sa kanilang mission. The corridor. Corridor. Mm-hmm. Pwede bang talakayin dito yan? Pwede naman. No. O, ikaw nang bahalang mag-edit, oh, no? Kasi under, this is history, eh. Under, water under the bridge and, and you cannot change, you cannot, you cannot hide change from history. Yeah. history. <laughs> okay. and, ang nangyari dyan, uh, gusto nating get back Saba. Saba. Mm-hmm. Nag-organize itong Jabida na mga Muslims. Mga Tausog. Mga Tausog. Mm-hmm. Headed by mga PMA, uh, mostly mga PMA uh, Special Forces mm-hmm. uh, trained. Mga kasamahan mo. Yeah. Kasama ko doon sa Special Forces. Mm-hmm. Uh, Muti na lang hindi ako nakasama. <laughs> iba iba <laughs> yung nautos. Ang mm-hmm. um, plano nila is to infiltrate Saba. They commit atrocities in Saba. The uh, Muslim participants were revolted with what they were doing to their fellow Muslims. Some of them wanted to wanted out. Isang classmate ni Abidilia. Kinampihan yung mga Muslim. So, pati siya. Pinatay. They were training Diyan, sa kwan, d- during that time. Sa, sa Corridor. corridor. So, hin- corridor. So, so, the Operation Merdeka did not push through. Naka-infiltrate na sila. Naka-infiltrate na? Oo, oh, bu- bumabalik dun, dun, kasi nandun dun yung kampo nila sa Corridor. So that's the part of history that was not yes. mentioned? No. That's the that's the missing part of history? Yes. I produced a, a story with TV5 about the Operation Merdeka. And uh, according to the historians, they were training at Corridor. And before they even they even launched the operation, nag revolt. So meaning hindi natuloy yung natuloy sila dahil kausap ko yung mga nandu kausap ko yung mga taong involved. <laughs> Kaino man ko kabarkada ko, <laughs> and they were trying to convince me to join. <laughs> Gusto ko ipakita sa yon yung yung perception ko na ginagamit lang kami bilang kasangkapan mm-hmm. ng uh, a narrow vested interest in our society. Yung sinunog yung dalawang barangay sa Bantay, Ilocosur mm-hmm. ng mga grupo ni Crisologo. Yung company ko ngayon, kumuha doon sa mga, mga victims, dinala namin dito sa Ateneo, UP yung kwan, to protect them. Doon kami nagkakilala ni Edgar Hobson. So, after that incident, I requested na magturo na lang sa PMA dahil, yun nga, na-involve ako doon sa kwan ng Ilocos. Kasi, ilo, si Chrisologo, Congressman Chrisologo, ang nag- recommend sa akin na nag-sponsor sa akin sa PMA. When I was teaching in the PMA, itong ang klase nila Onasan, class 71, I was very vocal in uh, denouncing yung, yung na-experience ko doon. Umabot sa kaalaman ni Congressman Crisologo na, na nadagdagan na that I wanted to kill him. I received a notice to report to, con- the of- to the office of the Congressman Crisologo at that time, together with my father, who was the Army Surgeon General at that time. When we entered the office, lahat ng bodyguard ni Congressman nasa likod niya. Uh, Congressman Crisologo started raising his voice, saying, in Ilocano, no? Ano itong... What is this? I heard that you want wanted me assassinated. Pinsan ko pa naman itong tatay mo. 
from you? Why are you allowing your son to do this to me? My, as uh, directed to my father. And you, sabi kay General Ugalde, yung superintendent namin sa BMA, if not, in, if, if not for me, you wouldn't have gotten your star. Why are you allowing your officers to plan my assassination? I denied because <laughs> there was no truth to that uh, accusation. I was denouncing what they did, but not planning to assassinate him. One week after, he was shot inside the church in Vigan, Ilocosur. Congressman Floro Crisologo. Hindi ako ngayon yung suspect. I was uh, thinking that General Ugalde, because he was there when he when uh, Floro Crisologo was accusing me of uh, planning to assassinate him. And then one week after, he was shot in the church. I was uh, I was waiting to be arrested. At that time, we have already finished planning the PMA uh, raid, the armory raid. Ang speculation ko. General Ugalde maybe thought that I, I really did it. So, natakot siyang i, i, sabihin na, oh, si, kagagawa niya bigyan, baka mamaya siya naman ang ano, isunod. So, he kept quiet. <laughs> And so, the PMA raid in the armory, December 29, 1970, Pushed through. Kung inaresto ako at that time, that was mga November when he was killed, hindi sana natuloy yung PMA raid. Ano na sinasabi ko nga na yung paggamit ng economic and political elite natin sa mga instrumentalities of government and one of them is the armed forces and the police. Ginagamit kami sa anti-strike. Pag mag-strike yung mga manggagawa, tatawagin kami nung owner ng one oh tulungin naman nila kami ni so sino ang kakampihan namin yung yung owner yung owner ng pagawaan laban do sa mga manggagawa pag nag-alsa yung mga magsasaka sa Central Luzon oh sino ang tatawagin tatawagin ng armed forces pero because of the exploitation of the land owners against the one kaya nagre-rebelde yung mga mga, mga farmers When we come back, let's talk about the new chapter inside the Communist Party of the Philippines after that raid. You're still inside Martin's Man Cave here on Podcast.ph. This is the 80th and the most exciting episode for this year, 2016. Kasama pa rin po natin si former AFP General Victor Corpus. We'll be right back. <laughs> Let's go back to the NPA days. Yon, mahalaga. Lima, makikikain kami sa, sa bahay ng isang sibilyan. Tawag namin doon, masa. Kasi yung ating sistema, sasabihin namin, eh, parang ganito. Ganyan ang sistema natin ngayon. Maraming mga incidents yung nangyari that led to the eventual uh, leaving of the movement. Ang unahing dahilan ay yung 